Hello and welcome to another trip report. This time, not on a long distance train, not on an international train, it's quite difficult in Taiwan, but on a really scenic train ride on the Pingxi Line. Not that far away from uh, Taipei, the capital of Taiwan. Um, right now I'm in Xiefen, the train will go right through the town here. There are well, lots of fenders who are more or less on the tracks here. I'll tell you all about this in the video. This used to be a line that was mainly used for coal transport, but the coal mines are closed and now it's a really popular touristic destination and it's really pretty. I'll tell you all about it in this video. For now, I hope you like this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up or if you think it's a helpful video to you. And if you want to see more train related videos, mainly about long distance train and sometimes ferry traveling to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation, hit the subscribe button. But for now, let's roll the intro. Today I'll be traveling with my girlfriend and her father along the Pingxi Railroad Bronze Line. This is a great excursion for if you're staying in Taipei or if you're traveling by train around Taiwan as a stop along the way. During our visit we stayed at my girlfriend her parents and from their house we traveled with the metro to the railway station of Songsan. At Songsan you will find the metro of Taipei and the Taiwan Railway Administration trains. These are basically non-high speed trains. At the railway station we bought some breakfast and a great thing about Taiwan is that you find at so many convenience stores spots where you can rent power banks, ideal for if you forgot to charge your mobile device. Directions are given in general very clear in Taiwanese railway stations, however some things that might be helpful for you if you're looking for directions. MRT stands for Metro and TRA, that's the railway company that does have most trains in Taiwan, so the conventional railway lines. This is a railway map of Taiwan that shows the railway lines for the conventional trains and the high speed line. This doesn't include the metro though that might also serve very interesting interurban connection. Let's zoom in on the network map in the north of Taiwan. Right now we're at the railway station of Songsan. At Songsan you won't find high speed trains, but at Taipei main station and Nangang railway station you will find high speed trains. From Nangang you can also find connection on the local trains we will take for the first leg of our journey. What is to Rufang? At the railway station of Songsan you will find a combination of both long distance trains and commuter trains. And for the long distance trains you can also pick up your bento box at this counter. Apart from that, over here you can also buy railway related souvenirs. It was closed when I was here though. Apart from taking the metro to here, there's also a taxi stand and a parking lot. Next to the places where you find the souvenir shop and the bento box shop, there's this happiness house. This is being owned by the Taiwanese Railway Administration and it looked really happy, although it was closed when we were here. There are lots of vending machines where you can buy train tickets and for shorter distances you can also travel with your easy card. Apart from that, there are some ticket counters as well and we bought a special ticket for the Pingxi line over here. Information about departing trains will be given at these screens and these screens are per direction, north or southbound. However, we're quite up north over here, so I would rather say that east and westbound makes more sense. You will find access gates at this railway station and right after the access gates there are some more waiting areas and even some shop. There are escalators, stairs and elevators to the platform and directions have been marked very clear. We were traveling with a local train along this route, however you might find some long distance trains as well. Personally I think traveling on the local trains is best because on the longer distance trains seats might be reserved. Anyway, this is our train coming in. You will find different kinds of trains on this route. We were traveling with a local train, 
This is also being mentioned as Fuxing or shuttle train. Even though Fuxing might be a little bit confusing because in China this is the name for some high speed trains. These trains in China or as some people like to call it mainland China, I covered them back in 2019 when I did my journey along the Silk Road from the Netherlands to China by train. Within these commuter trains that do look more like metros than trains, you will find toilets, one urinal and there's the squatting toilet. Personally, I prefer squatting toilets in general, but on trains, I don't know, because it's a bit harder to keep balance if the train is moving. Overhead luggage racks are located all over the train, and screens at the ceiling and right above the entrance doors do host information about the route. All information that's given is given in Mandarin, but also in English, and announcements are being made automatically in Mandarin, English, and in two Hakka languages, what are local languages of Taiwan. For the first section, we traveled with the Easy Card, but this is a smart card for public transport in Taiwan. You can also use this as a payment card in many shops, and especially in convenience shops. It's a bit comparable with the PASMO in Tokyo and Tea Money in South Korea. For these Fuxing or shuttle trains, you can also travel with these cards. For express trains, the rules are a little bit different per route and train type, so I'm not gonna explain all of this. The train makes its way through the suburbs of Taipei on its way to Rufang. Even though this is quite a dense populated area of Taiwan, the views at several spots along this section of the journey are quite pretty I have to say. When I made this trip to Pingxi it was a rather rainy day. In general the climate in Taiwan can be quite hot and also humid, so keep this in mind. You can already see this if you look at the vegetation over here. The train will follow the Keelung River, so you will see this from several points of view along the journey. This here is by the way one of the longer distance trains. After about 30 minutes, the train arrives at the railway station of Rufeng. From here we can travel with our special Pingxi ticket we bought. The Pingxi line ticket doesn't only give you access on the Pingxi line, but also on the Xiao line. The Xiao line deserves a different video, because there's something cool at the end of this railway line. So on one of my next family visits in Taiwan, I'll try to cover this as well. It's also a good day trip from Taipei. The station of Rufang feels much more rural than the station where I started this journey in Taipei. It doesn't feel like a town in the middle of nowhere, but it's obvious you're not in a big city anymore. There's a waiting room and right at the front of the railway station there's a square and you're not far away from the town center either. A convenience store is located right next to the railway station. There are so many convenience stores here, and if you look at Taiwan per capita, you will find more 7-Elevens and Family Marts than in Japan. I also noticed the first get for this journey, but there will be a whole lot more coming up, because our first stop after this is Cat Village. Just like at all railway stations, screens do host information about departing trains, but you won't find access gates over here. Instead of that, there's staff to check your tickets. Especially directions for the Pingxi line and the Chiao line have been marked very well. These trains do depart from track number 3. Within this railway station of course you find stairs, but there are also elevators available. And at platform 3 it has been marked very clear what way to go to for the Chiao line and the Pingxi line. Even though most of Taiwan's railway infrastructure has been electrified, the Pingxi Line and the Tsuao Line are not electrified branch lines. And this here is our train coming in, 
that will go along the Pingxi line and thus have Yingtong as the final destination. These are really simple diesel powered commuter trains and the layout is also just like in many metro trains. There are overhead luggage tracks and there is also a toilet available because it is still a train after all. One thing I like most about these trains is that you can have a look with the driver. So this also means you can have a view from the back of the train. I totally love the views from the back of the train. And like I said already when I recorded this video, tour is complete without doing a toilet review. no train tour is complete without doing a toilet review. And we have the squatting toilet again. These are diesel multiple units that can be combined, so you can basically walk from one train set into the other one. The trains I noticed on this route did consist of 3 or 4 train sets, so cars. I don't know if they will split up these train sets if the demand is lower. I was here on a Monday morning in an off peak season and just after Taiwan opened its border after Covid again. So it was not really busy with tourists as you might expect. Just like in the previous trains, announcements are being made automatically in Mandarin and English, but there's no digital route information. Instead of that, you'll find these line maps all over the train. For now, we start with the first section of our trip to the Pingxi line, what is still on the main line to the railway station of Hao Tong. Because Hao Tong is still on the main line, you can also take local trains directly into Taipei from here. Hao Tong is nicknamed Cat Village. Originally Hao Tong is a mining village and from the 1990s it has been in decline. However, from 2008 a local cat lover organized volunteers to start offering abandoned cats a better life. They posted the cats pictures online resulting in an overwhelming response from cat lovers all over the nation. Soon Hao Tong became a center of cat lovers as the word spread and the number of cats that are living here has increased a lot. From what I've heard, there are more cats than humans living over here. So I guess there won't be a lot of mice. The location of this town is also really pretty in the middle of the mountains and remember you're just outside of Taipei. At the front side of the railway station, there's also a museum dedicated to the mining history of this town, but also at this spot you will find a lot of cats. The trains on the Pingxi line do run every hour, so we did not spend a whole lot of time over here, because we also wanted to take the next train. However, if you have some more time, I really advise you to visit the Mining History Museum over here. Apart from the many cats that do live in this town, you will find a lot of cat themed shops, like souvenir shops, but also cat cafes for example. This town lives cats. And personally, I'm a great cat lover myself, and no cat has been as pretty as my own little Keisha. From Hao Tong, we start our journey on the Pingxi Browns line itself. At this moment, we are still on the main line. For the next tiny bit of this video, I'll show you some views from the train between Hao Tong and Shift.
now the train is entering the town of Schiffen, where the tracks are more or less in the middle of the village. This doesn't count for this town only by the way, but I will show you in a bit. From here on it's about a 20 minute walk to the waterfalls, but you can also get out at the railway station of Dauha and walk for 10 minutes. To put it in perspective, this is where you find the railway station of Dauha, this is where you find the waterfalls and this is the railway station of Schiffen. The Pinksy Browns line is a single track railway line. However, at some parts the trains just need to pass each other. And that's happening at the railway station of Schiffen. Therefore trains do stop relatively long at this station. As you can see the station itself is not very big. Right next to the station you will find a hanging bridge that will go to another part of the village. I guess this is less popular for tourists and therefore we were also a bit curious about going here. Within the other part of the village, at the other side of the hanging bridge, you will find a bus stop because well, having a bus stop at this tiny spot near the railway station is rather difficult. At the hanging bridge you will be reminded about the mining history of this region. And you have a great view from the other side of the river on the railway station and the old town. The train is running straight through the old town and at this spot you find a lot of vendors. Over here you can buy a lot of street food and of course if you want to buy souvenirs you can do this here as well. This town is mainly known for the lanterns. In old Taiwan this used to be a tradition and now it's mainly popular for tourists. These lanterns are quite polluting and they cause a lot of damage in the environment because they would just end up somewhere. Apart from the waste issue, at the moment these lanterns go down and the fire is getting lower, the fire is still on and there have been some serious fires due to these lanterns. If it's a tradition in Taiwan, that's fine, but keep it as their tradition. And yes, I admit, it's nice to see, especially at night. Like I mentioned, the train will go straight through the village, and in a way it reminds me a little bit of the market in Bangkok, although that's way more interesting than this. But I guess you know what I mean. From here it's about a 20 minute walk to the waterfalls. This part of the village is still quite touristic but way less crowded than the part where you find the train. On a Monday lots of shops here were closed but I bet if you go here on a busy day there are lots of places where you can buy some food as well. The walk to the waterfalls is pretty scenic and everything is arranged very well over here. There are lots of public toilets, but this is something I found arranged very well in Taiwan in general. Some of the waterfalls and the bridges, we could already see them at the moment we were on the train. We went with the train over this bridge. But if you stand right next to the waterfalls, you have a way better impression. And this one here is the first one to show you. This is one of the smaller waterfalls around here. As you can see from the drone shots, this is a hilly place. And Taiwan is a very rough country in general, you find lots of mountains. This here is not even high yet, compared to what you can find else here. And the train that will just make its way through these mountains. The bigger waterfall, you just can't see it from the train though. However, this is definitely a scenic train ride, like I already showed you and I'll continue showing you. Because we will go back to Schiffen and continue our journey along the Pink Sea Line. As we make our way to the waterfalls of Schiffen, we'll go along another hanging bridge. From this bridge you have a great view on the train as well. The train bridge is, as you can see, right next to this hanging bridge. At this spot you will be reminded again about the mining history of this area. The mines are not being used anymore nowadays. Along the walkway to the viewing point for the Shiffen waterfalls, there's also this Thai Buddha. 
it's, well, an import Buddha, because in Taiwan you won't find four-headed Buddhas. And of course, there are places where you can buy some food and drinks along this walking path. It's Taiwan after all. The viewing point does have several layers and the views are really nice. These waterfalls are often being called the Tiny Niagara Falls. I've never been to the Niagara Falls, but calling this the Tiny Niagara Falls, <laughs> I think that's a little bit ambitious. However, this is really pretty though. Anyway, time to head back to the railway station of Schiffen and continue our journey along the Pink Sea Line. At the moment we walked here, the train was already waiting for us. Because it had to wait from the train from the opposite direction, we were not in a hurry. From Schiffen, we took the train to Pinksy, the town after this line has been named. For the next tiny bit of this video, I'll show you some views from the train between Schiffen and Pinksy. At the town of Pingxi, there are also some lantern vendors. In a way, it feels a little bit like the town of Schiffen because the shops are right next to the tracks and the tracks are part of the street. Although it's not as big as Schiffen. If you follow the railroad tracks and you go down over here, you end up in the town of Pingxi. And this place is really nice and cute. There are lots of shops where you can buy some food and drink over here. And if you walk a little bit out of the town, you have some great views. I really like this place. We did not spend a whole lot of time over here because we needed to go back to Taipei because we had met up with some friends for dinner that same night. I really recommend you to combine a visit along the Pingxi line with a visit to Zhou Fan later at night. From Rufen, you can take a direct bus and this is really easy to plan in Google Maps. Also, if you are a hiker, along the Pingxi line and especially at the end of the line, there are great hiking trails as well. Probably I'll go here next time again. Anyway, this is the train that took us back to the main railroad line. Rufang. We're back at Rufang station with the squad. I hope you like this video. If you did so, give me a thumbs up and like I said in the introduction, if you want to hit me more, hit the subscribe button. You don't know where it is, somewhere at the bottom and see you on my next video. At last, if you're interested in other trip reports, of course you can find them on this channel. However, in the description of this video on YouTube, you find a link to a map and on this map you can find all trip reports I've made. It might be easier if you're looking for specific videos. This channel is mainly focusing on long distance and international train and ferry traveling to show you what it's like to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. Once again, thank you for watching and see you on my next video.